Hello bag builders, it's Diane from Spencer Rogue Sewing Patterns. So a little freebie today to thank you for your business this year and wish you all a very, very happy Christmas. So as usual, if you like what you see, please do subscribe to my YouTube channel. Every subscriber makes a difference. You can also join my Facebook board. Um, it's a sewing group where you can share your photos of your wine filled pods once you've made them and we'd love to see them. So this is the doorstep wine pod. A couple of months ago I made the doorstep care pod which I know lots of you made and the idea was that it was something you could make from just what you had in your stash quickly to gift to a friend or a neighbour who might be in isolation during lockdown. So I was looking at it last week and I thought hey that makes a great gift bag anyway but wouldn't it make a great wine bag if I rejigged it? So here it is. You could just call it a plain old bottle bag, but it's more fun to call it a doorstep wine pod. And in my case, maybe a sewing juice pod. It's great for gifting for Christmas and other occasions, but also great for a little doorstep gift to leave for someone. So go on, show someone you care. There's no hardware, no interfacing whatsoever, and you can use anything at all to make it up in. But if you do have a stiff or firm fabric like this, then it's going to stand up on its own. So this wine bag is a little more sophisticated than most with its integral handles built in and it may take you an extra few minutes to make them and construct it. However, it's well worth it and it's something they're going to keep and it's got a really easy box bottom construction that lines up every time with plenty of space for a bottle. And at the end, I'll share with you how to change the size and shape to suit other gifts and give you some ideas for jaunty closing methods and maybe some decoration. It's completely free, all the measurements are given in the video and there is a template to download for the handle placement to make it even easier. Just follow the link in the text below to get to my blog, there's no sign ups for anything. The finished bag measures 14 inches tall with ample room for a bottle of wine or spirit but you can easily scale it up or scale it down as I say. Make it in seasonal fabric or add your own embroidery or decoration to the outside before you make it up. Even stitching a seasonal ribbon around the whole length of fabric before you start will look really, really effective. So, what are we waiting for? If you're ready, let's go sew! So the only things we're going to need for this project are fabric and a matching thread. So have a rustle through your stash and see what you've got to in there that's nice and firm or relatively stiff that's going to help the bag stand up on its own. So something like Cordura, as I'm going to use today. So this is a, a medium weight Cordura. It's still quite a reasonable firmness. It's actually got a backing, a kind of a waterproof backing on this one, which gives it an extra stiffness. But anything that has a firmness to it. Oil cloth, like you see on tablecloths white clean tablecloths. Waterproof canvas is a great one for it because it's nice and firm. It has that waterproof backing, stops it fraying, holds it up very nicely. I made the blue version in this waterproof canvas. Very economical too. But even down to oil skins and waxed canvas, anything that has that firmness and ability to make the bag stand up is going to be brilliant for this project. So if you're ready, let's cut out. So we're going to need to cut just three pieces for this bag. Piece A for the body is just one long strip, eight inches wide by 32 inches long, and that will form the whole body, both sides. And then we need two facing pieces B, and they are eight inches wide by six inches tall. So I'll add the measurements to the text below. I've also added a downloadable template here to the blog and this is the handle shape and, the, and its placement so there's a link in the text section below the video so just click to show more and there's a link through to the blog and you can just download that pattern piece cut it out and cut the hole out of the center and that's how we're going to position our handles the seam allowance for the whole project is one centimetre or three eighths of an inch all the way through unless otherwise stated. Now before we start we're just going to take piece A. If you are using a fabric that frays you can neaten the long edges 
it's only the long edges you'd need to do um, with a zigzag stitch but only if it's a fraying fabric there's no need to do it on something like this so let's take our two facing pieces so I've downloaded my pattern piece and this as I say is the placement it's exactly the same size as those facing pieces I've cut out the whole placement in the middle of the template and that will help me draw the placement for the handles so if you flip those pieces over I've actually already drawn these on but just place your template on top clip it in place oops and then you can use a I've actually used a pen here so you can see it but if you use a disappearing marker or a piece of chalk just to draw that shape on and then when you remove it it's nice and clear where you need to stitch if you do want to draw these freehand these shapes you don't need to download the template they're just two and a half inches wide by two and a quarter inches deep just a note of caution don't go any wider with those handle holes because you're going to need that space later on and you'll see why later but as I say don't make them any wider now I'm going to take these to the ironing board and I'm going to press a one centimeter or a three eighths of an inch hem up on both the bottom edges of those facing pieces so there I've pressed my hem with wrong sides together so you've drawn your handle placement on the wrong side of the fabric pressed my hem wrong sides together at the bottom of each of those facings and I'm now going to stitch along just to secure that hem in place I'm just using a regular size 14 needle here and a stitch length of about 2.7 So back stitch at the beginning and end of every seam and trim at the end of every seam too so you don't have lots of trimming to do at the end. Trimity trim trim, there we go. So that's my facings hemmed and we're ready to work on those now. So grab your main body piece A again and we're going to work on one of the short edges. So with right sides facing up Grab one of your facing pieces and lay it right sides down. So you've got right sides together and we're going to lay that lining up the short edge of piece A with one of the long edges of piece B and the hem is at the bottom. It's the raw edge at the top we're matching up. Clip that in place. And now I'm going to stitch around our mark shape being really careful to keep the curves as smooth as possible. Using a smaller stitch length actually helps with that because your stitches are smaller, you can turn more precisely. So I'm going to turn my stitch length down to about 2.4. It really depends on your fabric as well, whether it's an open weave or a tight weave as to what you can get away with. The other thing that will help is to keep lifting your presser foot as you go around the curve. So lift, turn it a fraction, lift, turn it a fraction. Just roll this up out of the way. Now we're going to trim out the centre of the hole, that handle hole, back to about three millimetre or an eighth of an inch away from the stitch line and then we're going to clip the curves. So I usually start with a big pair of, pair of scissors and then go in with a little one to, to clip them. Take your clips off now anyway. Leaving behind isn't actually 
a precise science. It's more the snips into the corners that are going to make the difference. So just keep it nice and small. And then take a small pair of scissors and snip into each of those corners. So lots and lots of little snips. The more snips you have, the smoother that curve is going to be. Be careful not to cut your stitch line, of course. If you do accidentally snip it, you just have to just stitch over it again. And nearly there. There we go. Lots and lots of little snips. <laughs> Can you see those? So before I turn that through, I'm going to go to the ironing board and I'm going to turn a hem on the top edge here. So I'm going to turn down one centimetre or three eighths of an inch, wrong sides together on both the front and the back. And I'm going to make sure that they sit nicely and evenly together when they're turned. So there we are, I've pressed a hem onto the top of the facing and the body. And they're nicely lined up. We're not going to stitch those at the moment. And of course, I'm sure you don't need me to remind you that when you are pressing fabrics with a coating or if they're vinyls or anything with a plastic substance on, just be careful of your iron, don't touch the backing of it. So for our next trick, of course, we're going to turn this through. So take your facing piece and just push it through the hole. It can help. Do it at the ironing board. It does help if you kind of fold that back a little press, fold that back a little press, so you're actually pressing along those lines. I'll just finger press them here, which usually works on this type of fabric anyway. And then we will push the facing piece through the hole, one side at a time, so one side through there and that side through the hole. As I say, do this at the ironing board and then you get a nice press on it, so we're pulling it through to the back and laying it so it's nice and flat against the outer body. So I'll take that to the ironing board and I shall press that in place and hopefully I've got enough snips in there so it sits nice and smooth. So there we are, a beautiful handle hole. How pretty is that? You must be proud. <laughs> if you do find you're getting any puckers around those corners, it will be purely because you haven't snipped close enough to the seams inside. So just turn it back through, snip closer, turn it back through and press again. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat exactly the same thing with the other side. So there we are, our two beautiful handle holes. You've done so well so far, I think it's time for a break. Break time everyone. We know it's always worth having a break midway to enjoy what you've achieved so far. So do take a break now. Um, normally we'd have a cup of tea and a biscuit, but as it's Christmas, well, what the heck. Just wanted to show you something as well. This is my break today. Uh, my friend has just made me this amazing scarf. She obviously knows me too well. Um, because inside is a little zip pocket with a concealed little Paris Tweed hip flask full of sewing juice. How good is that? And nobody will ever know. Okay, break over, back to work everyone. So now it is time to form the box bottom in our bag. So we're gonna fold the bag in half with the wrong sides together. I know it looks a bit strange at this point. So wrong sides together, line up those top edges so they all meet beautifully at the top. You can always put a clip in for the time being, just to hold it in place and on that crease at the bottom put a couple of clips just to hold that in place and then i'm going to make a snip mark you can make a snip or you can make a 
a mark in chalk but you need to do it on all each side of the fabric at one and a half inches up from that folded bottom edge so one and a half inches grab my scissors not a pen one and a half inches is there and one and a half inches on this side do and this is so we can get a nice even box bottom without having to sew those triangles or anything else on there so I've got a snip mark on each side of the fabric at one and a half inches up from that bottom folded edge so now I'm going to fold the fabric down I'm going to take one side of the bag and fold it down with right sides together at that one and a half inch line so take those clips off the top Grab the top edge only and you're going to fold that down on that one and a half inch snip mark. There we go. So I can put a clip in the side there, just put it through those layers on that side. And then flip the whole thing over. And we're going to do the same on this side. You're going to fold this side down at those snip marks. So it's all right sides together now. Snip mark, snip mark. Make sure that fold line is nice and even. Going all the way across from one snip to the other. And clip that on in place on top. So just to show you what you've done there, you've enclosed a little layer of fabric or a double layer of fabric in there, which will form the bottom of your bag. So you can take those clips off now inside, fold it back over, you can see inside that little V of fabric. So make sure those side seams are beautifully lined. I'm going to put an extra couple of clips in just on the side seams here. Now I'm not going to go any further up because we don't want to stitch through this facing, we're going to clip this facing out of the way. So just lift for that and clip it literally just so it's out of the way of the side seams so flip it over and <laughs> clip that facing out of the way as well we're not doing anything with that at the moment it's just the side seam so carry on matching and clipping your side seams both sides And then we can stitch those with a one centimetre or three eighths of an inch seam allowance all the way from top to bottom. But this seam allowance at the top needs to be folded open again. Don't stitch that with it folded down, fold it open. We need that at the end. So in fact, put a clip in to remind you because I'm very good, I must admit, at getting to the top and realise I've um, stitched over it folded. So both sides, open it up again. Okay, into the machine and stitch along both sides. Flip it over and do the other side. so that's both side seams stitched you can take those clips off the facing now so lay it flat trim up trim it trim so now we want to join the facing side seams now if you made the doorstep care pod it was a much wider bag so we had room to pull these facings up and out of the way to sew them but this one has much less space and that's why I said don't make those handle holes any bigger because it'll give you even less space here and that's what we need so we want to match the right sides of the facing from this side and this side so to do that we need to fold them around to meet each other so roll this side of the body up everything facing and bag just to halfway or to the end of the handle okay take the facing that's sticking up 
and pull it over the top flip it over and you've got the other face in there so we just want to meet make those two facings meet and then clip them in place doesn't matter how neatly you rolled it inside it's just literally to keep it out of the way while we're stitching again that hem at the top edge needs to be folded open so clip it open so you don't forget later and now I'm going to stitch just that side seam so you're not catching any of the bag underneath literally just the facing Make sure the bag's out of the way underneath. Don't stitch through anything else. And I've kept that seam allowance at one centimetre or three eighths of an inch all the way through. Snip. So we're going to do the same to the other side. Now just flip that through. You'll have to push it out. You see it will pop through. And can you see how now you've got one? side seam attached there on the facings too. So we're going to do that with the other side again. Exactly the same thing. So we want the right side of this facing to match the right side of that facing. So we have to roll this side of the bag out of the way. That facing is popping up. Flip it over. Match it to the facing on the other side. I know it's a bit fiddly. It's fine though, you can do it. Clip in place. Make sure those hems are open again at the top edge. We don't want to stitch those down. Open them up. Just make sure it's all nicely aligned. And go and I'm going to stitch through the face in there. Make sure your bag is out of the way underneath. Hems open, don't forget. There we go, trim up. <laughs> pull that body out again. It will pull out. You can do it. There we go, and you can see now. So the bag is completely inside out, but you can see that both facings are attached. The side seams completely separate to the bag itself. So we're ready to turn it through. Hand in. I've got my hand stuck. There we go. We're at the birthing pool. Squeeze. Straighten out those corners at the bottom. You need to make them nice and tidy. Make sure they're aligned properly. The good thing about this folding method of making bag bottoms is they're never wonky. They always align with each other, which is always a good thing in my book. There we go. Push them out. Get two fingers into the bottom of the bag, both sides. There we are. You see how that's formed up nicely? And now we've just got to deal with the top edge. So you can see you've hidden all the seams apart from very low down. You've got no seams showing. And all we've got to deal with now is the top edge. So if your hems were nicely pressed, then they'll all fall nicely in line with each other. So just fold them down. I find the easiest thing to do um, is nest the seams when you're doing this rather than try and open them up. It seems it's a lot simpler. So one seam to one side, one seam to the other and fold your facing in at the hem and fold your outer in at the hem. So you're enclosing that raw edge at the top. Let me grab some clips. So one, so do the, the side seams first. So fold that down and fold that side down. Okay. 
nest those side seams. There we go. So you can see all we're doing is folding down at the top edge. It could be simpler actually to fold down the outer edge and clip it down first. It probably is a little bit easier to make sure one edge is all folded in nicely, clip it and then go back and make sure the facing is clipped nicely down. So there we go. Now facing is folded in. So match that up and add the clip to the two. It is easier to do it that way. So hopefully you can see that. I can't, it's pointing in the wrong direction. I'll have to double check. Okay. Yeah, make sure those side seams are nicely aligned. Yeah, we're doing fine there. So you can see everything is now lining up at that top edge. And all we want to do is top stitch around the very top edge, about three mil or an eighth of an inch away from the, the end, so that that seals everything in and secures it in place. So I'm gonna use the free arm in my, on my machine. So let me take that off so I can work from the outside of the bag. If you don't have a free arm machine, then you can work from the inside of the bag, but you'll have to keep sort of folding it back a little. So it's a lot easier to use the free arm and just slot it over the free arm of your machine. So let's stitch around the top edge. I'm back to my 2.7 mil stitch. You could go a, a wider stitch on the top stitching. There we go, trim up. And let's go and give that a press. You can use um, a tailor's ham to get inside there. If you don't have a tailor's ham, then a towel, a rolled up towel is a really good idea. So let me go and press that and we'll have a look at it. And there we are, a beautiful bag, ready to take our wine. Just a couple of extra tips here. While you're sewing that top edge closed, you can insert a ribbon in there. So you could have a nice big bow to fasten it with when you've finished. So just slot the edge of the ribbon into the seam as you're going through it with the main part of the ribbon coming out over the top and then that'll um, on, the, on both sides and then that'll give you a nice closure. Another way to close it is by adding some cam snaps or plastic snaps at the end. You can just add two here or one in the centre and then I've also got some tips for you on resizing it. So that's it, really super quick and easy to make. You can easily resize them. This shorter version, I used a strip just eight inches shorter, so 24 inches by eight inches wide. So it's great for foodie gifts. What would look better than a big pot of honey in there with a wooden spoon with a lovely tie on the end to make it wider. You can just add any width you like, um, nothing else to change, or you can revert to the original pattern of the doorstep care pod. And I'll put the link in for that below and maybe somewhere up here too. So get those bottles wrapped, bag builders. Guess what everybody in my family is getting for Christmas? Well, besides bag bodies. Bling them up by decorating the front. Um, you can put anything on the front panel before you start. You can embroider them, applique motifs, or even a strip of ribbon stitched along the whole strip before you start is going to look really, really effective. You can add ribbons or ties to the top. You can add them into the seam at the top as well as we discussed when we were making them or you can just tie them through the handles that looks really effective too use a string of pom-poms they always look really nice so there's loads of things you can do to really make them look exciting so please do join my facebook sewing board and show me your photos of your filled wine pods or post to instagram and tag with hashtag wine pod and as usual please do subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon below somewhere and that will notify you of any new tutorials when I release them. The more subscribers I have, the more free, free, free can't say it, the, the more tutorials I can make for you. All that's left to be said is have a wonderful Christmas, everyone. And what are you waiting for now? Go so!